This is Smith Welding. I'm Adam Niffin. I'm your host. Stroll around the shop with us. Check out what we got in here today. It's always fun and interesting. Uh, I've done a funky buttload of brake line replacements on old stuff, new stuff, big stuff. Uh, there was a minute I worked with a party bus company. What jackasses. Um, biggest mistake of, of my mechanic career. Uh, so we had to refer brake systems all the time because they got the worst broke gas school buses and made them into party buses. Um, really the only difference is along with the smell of feet and vomit there was a smell of beer. That, that's a party bus. Um, Alright, so back to the point. Uh, I got that segment of line, everything from there back to where it busts out of the loom that carries the fuel lines and the rear lights and all the important stuff that's strapped to the frame rail. There's room in that, there's room in the clips. There's only three clips and there's room in those. So I'm abandoning the brake line because it's not going to come out of the little rubber holster it's in. Uh, we're going to run new brake line. We're actually going to use a spool. Uh, if you're building a hot rod or a restoration, you're not going to use a spool line. It's just not clean. This has got to be, this has to be functional and safe. Um, I'm going to do a professional job. I'm going to do a clean job installing it. I'm going to do a correct job. Uh, you ever see people use these? Kick them in the balls. If you ever use these, um, make sure your wheel is written up. I've not had one fail. I've used them on my own shit before, okay? I will not use them on any customer's shit. First of all, it's illegal. Compression fittings, you can't use. Uh, it's, not a, it's just not a clean, professional way to do things, and it's not a good idea. So, uh, other than the straight line run, and then I can cut it long, so I can braid it up over, tie it to the axle where it's got to go at the union block. I'm running from the, from what I understand is the ABS computer all the way back to the union block on the rear axle. <laughs> or where the rubber line ties into that, or, you know, a, a union back there. I'm running the whole supply back again. And then I want to inspect from the block to the wheel cylinders, make sure those aren't blown out. When you do brake lines, um, replace anything that looks suspect. Because once you get the system up to pressure, you're going to blow another spot. If you're in a hurry, you get the system up to pressure, you get it blood out, and then you take off to do what you got to do. Well, that being said, you blow a brake line in the worst possible moment of your life. So that piece there, everything else is fairly straight. Uh, I'll leave myself a couple, three feet extra, which then in turn, once I get everything tied in, I can bend it around, put a tube nut, you know, cut it to length, put a tube nut on it, and bend it around where it needs to. Um, benders, I got this set of benders. I got this one. You kink. If you try to get a 90 out of this, you'll kink it, and it's a larger radius. Um, all right, so let's go through some tools. I've got a coated steel line. I got my flare, my flare kit. Um, undisclosed manufacturer, but he shows up once a week to take my money from me. So there you go. Um, these are for your double flares, okay? This is for your flare here. This is for your 3 16 tubing. So what we're going to do is I put tube nut on. Get it on your line. Don't for, don't forget this step. Can't tell many times um, I cannot tell you how many times in the past I've done the uh, uh, textbook double flare and I left this hanging out on the side. Now, I've already matched this up out of my basket of fittings to the original fitting. I don't want to reuse that if I can help it. It's not in bad shape. You could actually vise it, drill out the old tube, and reuse that. I've done it before in a pinch. 
Um, all right, so you put your tube on. You find the one you need, 316, 516C. You got transmission line, fuel line, and brake lines. Generally, that's how that works. See how I got chamfers right there? This is the side that faces the little piston deal. Um, I'm going to be incredibly scientific with all of my explanations and whatnot. So then we'll slam this on here. I'm doing all this one handed, so bear with me. 3 sixteenths, bring that around. screwed up what do you think folks I think I got the wrong slot yep I went in the 516 slot tripod hooked back up eventually so I can show some better how to's all right so you tighten this one down good and tight all right so this is your double flare portion all right you use this first this actually sits inserts down in the tubing here first you set it up like this see that little shoulder right there I'm about perfect See how the tube sticks out of the clamp that far? That's what you want. Bear with me, be right back. All right, for simplicity's sake, I went ahead and vised it up on my metal table. I've got the clamp on there. We're gonna go ahead and crank this around. What this does is gives you the internal portion of your double flare. Squishing that down, that die is, is squishing that down into that depression. It folds it in on itself. Nice and tight. So now, we're gonna roll this around. Get it where it'll come off of there. You can leave it on there, okay? Take this disc out. Let's inspect our shoulder yep nice and dimpled in see that it 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 squished it out now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that point down in there and it's going to what it does it doubles it back on itself like this so when you tighten everything down these two walls squish on the fitting all the way around the circumference and form that seal that you need to have for your brake system to not kill you. Okay. Just tightening down the clamp. Because I'm using the camera and everything, this is awful, off, awfully awkward and slow. I got it down in there now, seated, good. Actuality, I'm only gonna have to do this twice on this particular piece of tubing because I've got a spool I can run the whole length. All right, let's check out a flare nut, a double flare flip this little guy, and um. There you go. It's what they call textbook. It doesn't take an expensive 
flare tool to do this. All that means, all my expensive flare tool means is I'll be able to Ah, there you go. Hi there. Uh, all the expensive flare tool really means to me is where you as a hobbyist, you know, there, there's some pros watching these, I know. I get heckled by enough. It's all good, folks. Um, what the expensive one means to me is I can repeat this process thousands of times versus um, a cheaper setup, you can only do it hundreds of times. Make sense? I, I did, I, I paid quite a pretty penny. But I've also bought them for 20 bucks. <laughs> so now we've got our flare. Look how beautifully that fits, okay? Good, good, good. Next step is, this is the end that came from, right here. So we've gotta start duplicating that here so uh, I'm gonna and you see it's not it's three-dimensional it is bent on both planes okay so give me a minute I'll get back to you I'm gonna bend up some of this and get it straightened out so it makes sense there you go uh, fractional issues and then I've got it actually cut off down yonder and it whatever this is gonna follow the frame rail this here follows the frame rail but you now have the connection to go into the pump or computer this all is right here underneath the cab at about this point, it breaks away from, it ceases being under the cab, goes under the box. This is where it's lacing up into the frame right here from the union up above where everything comes together under the, the cab. Right here is where it actually laces up to be underneath the frame and then this will just shoot off out. I'll bundle that with everything safely. Uh -huh.